Hello, hello, Radioactive. What is going on? My name is Ian, and on tonight's episode, we are going to kind of flip the script here a little bit. See, I'm going to interview Victoria, and then we are going to dive into round two of Canadian versus American trivia. Indeed we are, and this is going to be really weird because I've never been interviewed before. Um, The only time was I interviewed a Canadian singer named Sean Hook. And before the interview started, he was asking me a bunch of questions <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to interview you now. And I was stressed to the max because he's like a pretty popular singer here in Canada. So I was like, oh, shit, I'm gonna I get- got two SpongeBob puns here for you. Uh, the hooks. Like you remember that episode of SpongeBob yes. where they're like screwing around on the hooks. Yes. I did. Yeah, that. And then um, I can only imagine, like, when you were getting interviewed, I can only imagine, like, you know that uh, episode where uh, the Bubble Bass comes in and he's all like, I need the pickles. And then yes. there's that final, like, showdown between SpongeBob and Bubble Bass and Mr. Krabs is just, like, dripping sweat. You can just, like, see rivers running down yes. Mr. Krabs. Dude, uh-huh. pull up a picture and, like, insert it in here at this particular point it's so freaking funny (laughs) i'll see if i can find a picture too and then we could go from there (laughs) god i love spongebob dude same sean hook though what a name Mm -hmm. actually lonnie he used to play he used to tour with sean hook oh no kidding but before right before he um went to join andy on his solo project lonnie used to tour with sean I would love to know how Andy and Lonnie met. And now before everybody jumps my case, I'm sure there's some interview I haven't seen. I'm reading the book right now, uh, Andy's book, and I'm about 10 chapters in. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris Beersack will probably, you know, have some knowledge on how they met. I Um, kind of know, I think, the story. Um, So from my understanding... There was a guy that played drums on Andy's first solo tour, and his name was, uh, let me get this right, I think it was Bo Evans, and Bo and Lonnie knew each other prior, and when the second tour came around for the Ghost of Ohio tour, Bo recommended Lonnie to Andy, or his management or whatever, and then Andy eventually picked Lonnie, so then Lonnie flew out and uh did like the first few rehearsals and yeah Uh, from my understanding that's how that happened that's awesome that is so cool dude i love that they're buds it's kind of like ben bruce and danny warsnop from asking alexandria they're always like giving each other shit and it's so funny it's actually funny it's funny how many musicians are like friends that you Mm -hmm. wouldn't know like it's actually pretty funny yeah. And I, you know, I, I think that's what you do as like, like me and my roommate, right? We have that same dynamic where we just give each other shit. And I imagine it's the same with a group of guys in a rock band. Yeah. Like, I want to know if they hazed Lonnie when he first joined the band. I want to know if they did. I think Chris had told me because we went to Cincinnati uh, and I got to have lunch and a beer with Chris and, uh, he, he told me a story about Lonnie getting hazed, and I can't remember what it was specifically. I have, like, a little recollection of, like, the context, but that's about it. All right, well, interview time. Are you ready? I, I think so. I think I'm ready. All right, don't get sweaty. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the thing. Before we start, like, uh, I took a nap in my bed over here, and I woke up, and I was just in a pool not even like a pool but i was like pretty damp and i even when i first met ruth and nicole shouts out to ruth and nicole of bbb army hearts to hearts when i first met them i like one of the big things that i said was i just feel like i'm always damp i'm like always (laughs) so sweaty and i mean you know i don't know what the deal is i mean my blanket's pretty thick though so that could be it but we usually keep it pretty cold in the apartment i mean downstairs at least it's pretty cold but up here dude it is hot (laughs) yeah i'm a really warm sleeper um yeah it's no fun so when you say warm sleeper what do you mean exactly like 
I don't know how to describe it. So when I go to sleep, I can have like my sheets and my comforter. I can be covered up with both blankets. Okay. But I'll wake up in the middle of the night, like just drenched because I don't yeah. know. Something happens when I'm sleeping. My body just like for like overheats. Oh yeah. No. And I mean, for and, me. And when I take naps, it's worse. Well, what do you wear? Shorts and like depend like a t-shirt oh okay i mean yeah that that kind of makes sense i mean you know me uh i sleep uh it, bare minimum i'm at least in my underwear and i cannot wear anything else yeah like i wear i wear like men's boxers like uh, like over top of my under panties <laughs> but like oh. I just I wear like those that kind because they're thin, right? Like boxer shorts are really thin. Sure, sure, sure. So that's what I wear. Um, because yeah, I just get so cold. <laughs> I can't wear pants to bed. I just get way too hot. Hell no. Do you wear socks? <laughs> no. All right, it depends. If it's if if it's winter, yeah, I'm wearing socks. If not, then my dogs are out. Okay. Like the only time I've ever worn socks is if I've come back from like a party that has been outside or a gathering that has been outside and I'm super cold. Mm -hmm. Then I'll wear socks and pants, like sweatpants or something. Sure. But other than that, no, dogs are out. Dogs are out. The dogs are out. Ah, oh, damn it. I was going to go somewhere with this and I cannot remember. Oh, if I am like out of town, because we, my parents and I, we have family like all over the place. I mean, my mom does, but my dad, the extent of his family is in Florida because all of his family lives in Missouri. But my mom, we have people that live in Korea. We have people that live in California, Texas, uh, Reno, Nevada. Dude, we, we have people everywhere. And, uh, if I'm over at my aunt and uncle's in Texas, I will wear like sleeping pants and a shirt and just not have a cover on. I'll just power through it. Mm -hmm. But like, I will 100% like be in boxers and, you know, God forbid I sleep naked in my own room in the privacy of my, you know, my bed. Mm -hmm. We, I, I feel like we're talking, like we're letting our viewers know a very deep part of us on, on how we sleep we are this is very personal stuff so they should feel very special knowing this they should they should feel honored they should all right interview time um first question i have for you uh victoria is um you know what was your gateway band that kind of got you into the alternate like punk rock metal uh scene like if if you guys all know me you know it was black bell brides and, okay uh, i'm going to answer this kind of two parts um so into the rock music scene was a smaller band from edmonton alberta canada called whale and the wolf um yeah they they were also the first band that i saw that made me like want to listen to music and pick up a guitar actually this guitar right there the one on the very end is signed by that band oh really um yeah so they're pretty they they're a bit bigger now but they were a smaller band at the time and they would come to um my hometown for a music festival so i got to see them a few times and the first time i saw them play i was like i need to learn how to play guitar that was the first band that got me into rock music. And I have, I think I showed you it before, but I have a tattoo of the band. Um, I don't think you ever showed me that actually. Let me see. It's, it's the guitarist's guitar. And then it says whale and the wolf and it has wings on it. Um, but yeah, they got me into like rock music as a whole. And then as far as like metal emo music, uh, it was black Phil brides. Yeah. And, uh, brides. Let's go. Yeah. And that was when Lonnie joined the band in November of 2019. And then after that, I got into like Sleeping with Sirens, Pierce the Veil, My Chemical Romance, all those bands. Mm -hmm. Dude, Blackville Brides, I, you know, if you know us, it, they're such an underrated band. I mean, they're out here, dude. They're out here. And it just sucks because, you know, I live in St. Louis and I just hear all these people, anytime I bring up Blackville Brides, 
eight out of the ten people are like, wow, you listen to them? They suck. They're terrible. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And I'm just I look at them and my middle finger goes up in the back of my mind. Yeah. 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 They they were definitely the band that got me into what I listened to majority of today. Um, yeah. Big part of the music I play, the music I listen to, and just even all around, like the kind of person I am, they definitely played a huge role into that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So question number two I have for you, Victoria. I look so yellow right now. I'm sorry. I gotta fix this. Oh, you look like Marge Simpson. I gotta fix this. Eh, I'm just gonna be yellow apparently. It's okay. You're gonna be I, a Simpson. I don't actually look yellow in person. Oh. Do you get it? I'm not yet. Eh, kinda. <laughs> I think I kinda got it. <laughs> Have you have you seen The Simpsons before? Yes, I have. <laughs> you need to like, you need to you need to like, get your hair to like stand up and then <laughs> spray paint it blue. Well, right? I'm I'm putting blue highlights in my hair. Yo, what? <laughs> I will be. So, I mean, if that counts. Oh, it definitely counts. <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. geez. Question All two. right. Question two. So Radioactive has been like a project that's been in the making for, I guess, if I remember looking through your videos, it's been about a year, right? Maybe a little less. Um, I started. So Radioactive started as a radio show. Um, right. I started doing Radioactive in 2019 winter of 2019 and then i did about a month uh two months on the air oh, like if i can talk i did about two months on air with the community radio station in regina saskatchewan and then from there COVID hit and then that's when the interviewing band started so i guess that would have been in 2020 okay and yeah from there i guess 20 yeah two years for like the podcast wise on like uh youtube so what um what kind of started that like where did this like drive to kind of have your own radio show and have your own podcast where did that come from um so actually this goes back to whale and the wolf the singer from whale and the wolf he used to be a radio host in edmonton and i always was looking for a job that I wanted to do when I graduated and I never knew what I wanted to do. Um, just, it was, it was always something involving music I wanted to do and being on the radio, you always get to be around music, you play songs and stuff. So I, from him, I kind of took inspiration being like, maybe I should try it out. So sure. at that point I was 16 and I got on at the community radio station in Regina and they had a program called Radio Kids. And I was on there for about two weeks and then they gave me my own show. So yeah, I guess just what sparked it was the people that I kind of looked up to at that time, music wise. That's awesome. That's really and, cool. And with the show, when I was on the radio, I was allowed to play whatever I wanted. Like I didn't have to play this much pop, this much rock. I didn't have to talk about certain topics. It was whatever I wanted to do. So that's, that was always something I liked because in school, I was never good at the direction um, assignments. I was more good at like the creativity stuff. So being able to just go on the radio and do what I wanted to without people telling me it was wrong and stuff. I really liked that. Good. Good. That's awesome. That's really cool. I I apologize if I ramble too too long i feel like i'm kind of rambling here listen i literally do that shit 24 7 so you're fine (laughs) um so i think uh i think another question that i have for you is how do you get all of these connections like how are you able to um acquire all of the emails uh like email addresses uh necessary to 
reach out to these people and be like, hey, I'm Victoria. This is what I want to like do. This is my thing. Uh, I'm really excited about it. How can we make this happen? How did how did you like come to acquire uh, the the contact information? Um, a lot of just figuring it out on your own, and a lot of frustration because I didn't know how to do any of it, and I didn't come from a background where people like were familiar with doing stuff that I wanted to do. So I guess it just kind of started with contacting local bands. Um, I know a few bands that I'm friends with that it just kind of started with face-to-face -face interaction or like um, through Instagram DM. And then from there, when I started getting into like Blackfield Brides and wanting to interview those guys, I was like, well, let's just start with the record label. Makes the most sense. So do you like Google like these people and then it'll like tell you, hey, here's what you have to do. Here's what you need to reach <laughs> no, out to or it was it was a big, 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 big learning curve. Um, yeah, I, I can't even tell you. Actually, probably the first time I started felt like I was starting to figure stuff out was when I interviewed Lonnie for the first time um because i saw he had his email linked on his instagram okay i was like and at that time he wasn't at really answering direct messages anymore just because the amount that he was getting um after joining the band so i emailed him and just tried to figure out a proper email format at the age of 16 sure so obviously from the first email i've ever wrote to now I have a better format and stuff, but um, I always forget that you're um you're 19, right? Yeah, I'm 19. Wow, which I will probably old. surprise a lot of people watching this. Oh yeah, I always forget that like I have four years on you. It's so weird. It's like it's like Cassidy. <laughs> Cassidy did not believe it. Oh yeah, no, she was like, "You are so full of it." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that was kind of the point where I felt like I was starting figuring stuff out was that first email I sent to Lonnie. And yeah, I mean, it obviously worked because from there, um, I got an interview with Jake Pitts and Jinx from Blackville Brides. And then from there, obviously, I really wanted to interview uh, Andy Beersack, obviously. Sure. And I did not know how to go about contacting him uh, just because he's... I f he's so much he has so much more demand than all the other guys do oh yeah so I remember somehow I found out who his manager was but I couldn't find his email so I guess from there I was just like well who can you who can I contact that would know this and that would be the record label so then I emailed Ash from Smearing Records and he was nothing but nice and he forwarded me to his management and I talked with his management and stuff. But at that time, Andy wasn't doing interviews because of COVID or like not right. doing many anyway. And yeah, so unfortunately I haven't been able to interview Andy yet, but I hope to someday. Oh, um, dude, if we ever get him on the show, I'm going to just... Oh, I mean, professionalism. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. But I, I don't think I'm going to be able to comprehend. When, it. when I interviewed Jake, I never wanted to throw up more in my life. And I don't know why I was fine with Lonnie. I was fine with Jinx, but Jake, he was like, he played such a crucial role in like me starting to play guitar again. And I just, he's my, one of my top favorite guitar players. Um, so is Jinx though, and I oh, dude, I, he and Jinx are the dynamic duo. They when are. they go back to back on stage, it's wild. But the funny thing is, when I look at Jake and Jinx in photo shoots, like they're they both look serious, right? But you go to like set the world on fire era, and I feel like Jinx looks more scary than Jake. <laughs> Even, I'm looking at my Black Road Brides, my BBB four <laughs> poster above me, and I'm like, yeah, Jinx is scary. Jake looks scary, but Jake is like giving me a death stare. Yeah, no, <laughs> I feel like 
It wasn't even that I thought he was going to be mean to me. Just something about Jake, like, scared the living shit out of me. Sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking up at Andy right now, and he's looking right at me. Um, <laughs> it's it's the Fallen Angels poster from Spencer's from, like, 10 years ago. And he's just, he looks, he just looks like he's ready to kick somebody's ass right now. In this one, too. Yeah. And then you got I have a I have a Juliet Sims poster from um oh what was it Disrupt Festival 2019 and she's in this like I don't even know how to describe it she's in this position right she uh, damn I don't I, I'm gonna kind of attempt here it's like it, <laughs> it's I I. I, I can only assume here for reference, I'm going to send you a picture and we'll just plop it in here. <laughs> it's like this. I think it's. Oh, geez. I think it's meant to be like this. I, I don't want to say it. This seductive, sexy pose, mm -hmm. which I mean, it makes sense, but I think that's what she was aiming for. I, I, I hope, I mean, <laughs> I, I can only assume, um, and uh yeah no it's cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah anyway that's kind of how anyone who's watching this that wants to start a podcast or has a podcast the best advice i can give if you want to interview someone that is under a record label go straight to the label and if you can find out who the owner of that label is and contact them directly um the less hoops you can jump through, the better. But yeah, usually after that, they'll forward you to management. And then that's when you can set up, <clears throat> try and set up something. But yeah, sure. that's kind of how it all worked for me. The real, uh, the real collaboration that we need, and I'm almost done with the episode, the most recent episode of BVB Army Hearts to Hearts. Uh, I'm about 30 or 40 minutes into it right now. Uh, I'm almost done with it. I got sidetracked. See, the thing with me is I have really bad ADHD <laughs> and like I get sidetracked so easy. Like there are so many episodes to like TV shows or so many movies, like episodes to podcasts that I just have not finished yet because yeah. I'm just like, I got sidetracked. I got stuff going on. So it, I don't want anyone to take it personally. It's just <laughs> kind of how I've always been. Yeah. Um, like the Andy show too. I'm sure there's like one or two of them that I haven't like finished. Oh, there's not because I don't Andy shows that I haven't been able to finish or like just haven't had time to watch. Exactly. Like I don't want anyone to take it personally. It's just like kind of how my brain is. But mm -hmm. um I've watched episodes in their entirety of shows and stuff like that. But more to the point, BVB Army Hearts to Hearts, this is a call to arms, Ruth and Nicole. We want to have a collaboration with you. And I think at the end of the video of the most recent episode is where you get shouted out. And then they're like, hey, let's do a collaboration. <laughs> Which I just want to shout out to Ruth and Nicole for giving me that fan shout out. Um, it's very kind of you. I really appreciated the kind words. So thank you very much. Um, it was it was very nice. Mm hmm. Oh, they're peaches, dude. We we love Ruth and Nicole so much. It's it's so fun because you know uh, through Blackville Brides, I've just met I met Root I, Root Root <laughs> Ruth. Your name is now Root, like root beer. You know, I'm just gonna start calling you Root. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so Ruth, Nicole, Cassidy, Jasmine, Rebecca Rodriguez, um. Oh, geez. Who else? Bellamy, uh, <laughs> Sherry. Uh, oh, man, the list goes on. They're just so nice. And, and obviously, Chris, Uncle Chris and Auntie <laughs> Amy, you know, they're oh, God, they're so awesome. They're all just so great. See, you apologized earlier for rambling. I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> I, I'm really sorry. Let's get back to the interview. OK, okay. so uh, my next question for you, I think we're, we, we've done about two or three right two i think two my eyebrow okay. just went really weird interesting anyway <laughs> we've done two questions has do your eyebrows like have a mind of their own yes <laughs> <laughs> um all right so victoria um 
what um what is your most irrational fear? Irrational, <laughs> like it's stupid, it's dumb, but it's something you're scared of. I don't want to say. <laughs> so Come on. Okay, but we can't talk about it for too long because it makes me feel gross. Okay. okay. All right. I'm listening. Ready? Yes. I have a fear, a stupid, stupid fear of hair, specifically wet hair. <laughs> I mean, no, that honestly, dude, look, I'm going to keep it a whole buck 50 with you. If you've ever seen the movie, The Grudge, I completely get where you're coming from, <laughs> dude. Anytime I see like girls cosplaying as the grudge or the girl from the ring and their hair is covering their face i want to faint that shit is scary but it's not just like like oh, okay hair right like i can touch people's hair it's when say like you're in a swimming pool and you get hair wrapped around uh. <laughs> you get the hair <laughs> you get i'm gonna try to do this without like gagging but you get like hair wrapped around your fingers that shit's nasty or like the drain oh yeah dude yeah no that's disgusting i completely get where you're coming from yeah and then i actually have two stupid fears but um the other one would be chickens i hate chickens um yeah <laughs> uh, chickens yeah i i have a terrible fear of chickens like a crippling fear of chickens why <laughs> they're scary looking and they come at you <laughs> <laughs> what you know like i live on a farm i've lived on a farm my whole life and <clears throat> <What's> <laughs> uh, i'm just gonna i'm gonna start snapchatting you and i'm just gonna go <laughs> I've lived on a farm my whole life and we had chickens. Mm, I'm trying to remember how old I was, like 11, probably 10. And yeah, ever since we got chickens, mom and dad brought the baby chicks home in a box and it was so cute. And then like a week or like probably like two weeks later, we went out to the barn to feed them and they were like the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I was <laughs> done. I was like, this i am not taking care of these chickens and yeah ever since yeah no chickens um and we actually had a chicken that tried to like i don't know what it was doing like trying to eat other chickens or attacking other chickens so mom and dad threw it out of the pen to just be on its own outside i did not know this so i'm riding my bike around the yard and i go behind the barn and the chicken comes running after me like that and I screamed, and for some reason, instead of hopping back on my bike to get away, which would have been 10 times faster, I dropped the bike and I ran. How old were you? Probably like 12. <laughs> well, no, probably like, probably like 10. But still. <laughs> just... I, I hate chickens. This makes me think of... Um... The two things. It makes me think of the chicken from Family Guy, the one that always fights Peter Griffin. <laughs> and if you have you ever seen the movie Toy Story 2? Yes. There's a guy, I I'm like 90% sure it is a chicken suit. But there's this like middle-aged man that kind of looks like Kevin Smith or Jack Black. And he has like all the toys and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he dresses up in a chicken suit. And that's kind of what it makes me think of. Yeah, so no no chickens and no hair for me. So I see. I hope no one ends up using this information against me at any point in my life. Oh, I'm going to. If I ever meet you in person, I'm showing up in a chicken suit to pick you up. Be like, that's fine. Like, the chick the whole chicken suit and stuff is whatever, but a actual chicken? Ugh. I don't understand why, because, dude, my friend Darius and I went on vacation with my parents, and we went to North Carolina, 
and we stayed at a and b and they had chickens running around the yard. And my friend right. Darius and I made it our goal to catch one. And we caught one. And the trick is you have to grab it by the tail and then they just start running and then you just pick it up and you start petting it. Oh, no, 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 no. My friend, one of my friends from high school, I went to her graduation supper and she also lives on a farm and they just have like chickens that just run around and they had their supper outside and yeah the chickens were coming at my it's like they knew I didn't like them because they kept coming up to me and like picking at my feet <laughs> and I tell you I was not impressed and her whole family was like what the hell is wrong with this kid and I'm like I don't like chickens that's what's wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny so those are my fears <laughs> anyway <laughs> we'll digress and move on I'm so dead that is so funny <laughs> Oh my God. That's actually really iconic. What is another question I have here for you, Victoria? Um, Oh, what has been the most memorable concert experience of your young adult life? Well, I've been to a lot of concerts. I've been to a lot of like small scale shows. Um, It it could be one of those too. Okay. I'm going to have to tie it between two. So one being when I was 16, I went to a sh- like smaller show in Regina and it was with the wild. They're from Kelowna, BC. And I kind of knew the band prior. So the guitarist follows me on Instagram and stuff. And um, towards the end of the show, they called all the kids up on the stage and they played fight for your right to party like you know the beastie boys gotta fight yeah so they had all the kids on two different mics and they had us like doing the backing vocals which that was really cool and after that the singer was asking everyone how old they were and i'll show i'll put the video up here but this the singer was asking how old everyone was and then they would like hit the drums and guitar that many times so when they got to me ben the guitarist took his guitar off and put it over me and I got to play guitar um, with them, which was pretty cool. So that was definitely like, that was like a moment where I was like, I want to play guitar. That's what I want to do. Um, second most memorable, probably the Blackville Bride show that I went to this past March. That was pretty cool because I got to see Chris motionless before the show. Um, we got barricade spots um i got to meet jake pitts and jinx and i got jake's stage vest which was pretty cool so yeah that, that, that was a really good experience um i would definitely do it again cool cool that was awesome cassidy and nicole uh did the jake and jinx and lonnie uh fiasco at uh the trinity of territory i'm, I'm gonna Cincinnati. get my vest this is the fantastic jacket that you get if you get lovely jake pitts jacket experience i love it that is so awesome dude and then he signed the bottom which was really cool and then you also got the set list from the show and mine is signed by jake jinx and cc which is really cool and i got two of jake's stage picks i think he used it i'm assuming he used them on stage but yeah i need to i you know what i would love to do that because I feel like I would I would wear that vest religiously. If I, I wear like... it. I wear it whenever like I get a chance. I mean, I don't really want to wear it out too much, just in case like people spill drinks on it or something. But right, uh, I've worn it for a few guitar covers and stuff, and I've I think I've worn it for an uh, interview or two or something. But yeah. that's awesome. All right, so that brings me actually to my last question I have here for you, Victoria, and that is um. As far as radioactive, as far as uh, having a new co-host, as far as interviewing all these big names, you know, for me personally, I would love if this took off. I think it'd be incredible if this took off. Um, But that being said, um, what is, this is a two-part question. What is your hope? What is your hope for radioactive? Do you want it to like, blow up and just go crazy or do you want it to be a bit more mellow um 
what what kind of do you want to happen there? And then part two is what is your dream interview to have on the show here with us? Okay. Um, so for Radioactive, I always did it as something as something fun. Um, but I was kind of wanted it to be like take off and be something bigger. I looked at like <clears throat> what um, like alternative press was like in like 2011, 12, 13, 14. Um, how it was really like emo based. I mean, it still is, but I feel like it kind of strayed away from that a little bit. I would look at that, but then I would also watch like the Andy show and just, I love how they would just goof off and have fun, but yeah, I would definitely like it to be something big, but still something fun. Um, but yeah, like if I, we have lots of people that watch the show, I would love for that to happen as a lot of people probably would if they, whether they're doing, you know, music or a podcast or whatever, but it's never something I want to be taken super seriously. Um, to the, like, it's something that's for fun and something I can do if I'm feeling burnt out. Uh, like, yeah. So that that's part one to the question. And then two, my dream interview. There's so many people I haven't interviewed. <laughs> that I really want to, um, someone that's always been at the top of the list was, has been Andy Biersack, um, to, to sit and talk to him and interview him and even like do, even after the interview, just to talk to him, you know, just one-on-one about music and his band and stuff. That's sure. something I've always wanted to do, uh, since he's been such a big part of, you know, who I am right now. Uh, and then you have like sleeping with sirens, I would love to interview Kellen Quinn. Um, I'm a big fan of Sleeping with Sirens. And if I'm going to do three, I'll pick three. So Andy Beersack, Kellen Quinn. And at the moment, I really want to interview Chris Motionless. Yeah. He's a fun guy to talk to. So those would probably be my top three. I think um, what would be cool to do um, with you would be us and then either Andy, Joe, and Pat from the Andy show. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Or we get Andy Beersack, Chris Motionless, and Spencer Charnas all on the same like thing here. Yeah. And that's the tricky thing too, is that like all these musicians run on different schedules and like they want to spend their downtime all in different ways. And um, yeah, it would definitely be something that I would love to do but oh yeah yeah. absolutely that sounds really cool um i'm not a i'm not a huge 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 fan of sleeping with sirens nothing like oh i i hate them they're yeah 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 yeah. nothing like that i just you know i don't really listen to them all that much but Mm -hmm. they are still a really good band i actually uh i like sleeping with sirens i think they're really good uh kellen quinn definitely has that um that uh chick magnet element to him <laughs> much like andy and much like the dude from pierce Vale, uh yeah ronnie radke uh dude girls just go crazy for those guys chris motionless spencer um you know mgk uh guys like that mm-hmm. and i wouldn't be surprised if lonnie too i mean uh, well everybody from black Bull brides just looks really really <laughs> They're, they're handsome men and you know that's that's a all thing, these though. that's a thing with these bands though like like you you have not have to but i'm i'm gonna get canceled for saying this like you have to have a good appearance to you right like right. you can't go on stage and be looking like a slob i mean no you're completely right about that you have to like have a presence i feel like yeah. you know and some some of these guys have their different like clicks or appeals like Blackville Brides, you know, they wear like leather jackets or mm-hmm. jean jackets and like black pants. Like oh like a I, I know Andy for him, a big influence for him was um uh Kiss, his first album that he ever bought for helping I think it was his uh, I think his uncle or his grandpa, I'd have to look in the book, uh was Revenge by Kiss, if I'm not mistaken. Um and then you have Motionless and Wide, who right now has the Cyberhex thing going on, which is yeah. like jumpsuits and stuff like that. And then 
Ice Nine Kills, you know, their suits. suits and ties. Yeah, right. And it's kind of funny. Um, this is kind of off topic, but I'm curious to see like the music scene in the next like 10 years when people like my age start coming up because you look at Blackville Brides, um, they pull influences from like Kiss, Metallica, I know is a big one for Jake and Jinx, um, like bands like that. And then I'm, it's going to be funny when people my age be like have successful bands. And then they say like, Oh, who did you look up to? Or who do you pull influences from? It's going to be like, Oh, Blackville Brides. Like, I feel like it's going to be kind of weird hearing that, like them hearing that or like just the way that you dress on stage. Cause I know a big part of how I dress is pull of influ like influences from the guys in Blackville. Oh dude. I, uh, my parents, <laughs> my mom, especially gives me so much crap for wearing black t-shirts all the time. Like if you look at my closet here, nothing but black t-shirts that's and, like mine <laughs> yeah and then like black skinny jeans with cuts and tears and even like weird i i have a pair on my bed here that i'm kind of messing around with i have a pant leg in my hand but uh stuff like that you know <laughs> so i could totally see that yeah yeah like for me i know i really want to be a musician so if i ever get to the point of being able to perform on stage and do festivals and stuff that's going to be a big thing where i feel like it's gonna be like oh you like black bill brides don't you yeah yeah absolutely so we are doing round two of canadian versus american trivia because last time i kicked ian's ass you know what i don't want to talk about it all right <laughs> So I want to talk about it. Today I will be kicking his ass again. Oh, you think so? Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so you know who, what? Who do you want to go first? Do you want me to ask you first, or do you want to ask me? Oh, you seem to be talking up a pretty big game. So why don't you go first? Okay. So this first question is a multiple choice question. What animal is on the Canadian quarter? Is it a deer, a moose, or a caribou? Oh, dude, I'm going to have to go with moose. Wrong. It's a caribou. Damn it. <laughs> what is a caribou? It's like a moose, but bigger. Like the antlers are different. The antlers are like in C shapes. <sighs> I think, yeah. They're bigger, I'm pretty sure, than moose. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. True or false, Victoria? Mm hmm Pocahontas married John Rolfe, a tobacco planter. A plant, but tobacco planter. True or false? False. Wrong. It's true. Pocahontas did, in fact, marry John Rolfe. And uh, he was a tobacco. You no, know, I was going to go with true, but I just I didn't. <laughs> mm. All right, you're up. Come on. Okay. Let's go. How many provinces are in Canada? Are there eight, 10, or 12? Shit. Um. <sighs> <laughs> 12 wrong 10 from east or sorry from west to east it's british columbia alberta saskatchewan manitoba ontario quebec new brunswick pei nova scotia and newfoundland what's the one that sounds like vagina regina regina, regina is a city in saskatchewan Oh, there's a there's a cartoon. Uh, it's called Forget About It, and it's a uh, it's an adult cartoon on Hulu. And uh, they always make that joke like, "Oh, it sounds like they're saying vagina instead of Regina." And I always thought that was every kind of funny. time, the two times that I have went to uh, WWE in Regina, there's always one heel wrestler that comes out, and they're like. 
Regina or they'll say it like Regina and then their other like tag team partner will be like it's actually Regina and then they'll start laughing they're like your city um your city rhymes with a lady part <laughs> and then it gets the people all worked up it's pretty no funny. that's funny though it's if there's so one thing I've learned Spongebob taught me this <laughs> you have to laugh at yourself and then he holds up the mirror and he laughs at himself right so I think it's cool that like since you're from Canada, you can kind of appreciate the humor and you don't get like offended per se. I yeah. think that's really cool. Cause dude, people associate St. Louis with, Oh God, just all kinds of characters. It's nuts out here. Anyway, back to trivia. Um, all right. True or false. 10 people were killed in the Boston massacre. False. You are right. It was five. Five people were killed after British soldiers fired on a mob that was harassing them. This took place in the 1700s. Okay. Okay. This is another multiple choice question. How many? What right now we're one and oh, right? Uh no, you you got got... I have two wrong. Yeah. And you have one right. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're winning one to nothing right now. Yes. So Again. this is another multiple choice question. How many territories are in Canada? Do you know what a territory is? Sort of. We have kind of. We have provinces and territories. So how many <sighs> territories do you think we have? All right. Name the name. Give me the choices. Okay, sorry. Give me the options. Um, a. Give me the options. Four. B. Two. Or C. Three. Ah. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with. What were the provinces again? How many were there? Ten. Ten. Ten provinces. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with three. That is correct. Yeah, let's go. We, All right. From east so, to west, we got Yukon, Northwest Territories, and none of it. Awesome. So we're one and one. Yes, we are. Oh, you're going you're going to get it now. You're going to get it now. I say that, and then I'm going to just <laughs> get obliterated. All right, let me see here. True or false? William Henry Harrison was the shortest serving United States president. So think of presidents of the United States. This guy served the least amount of time in office. What do you think? I'm going to say true. You're right. You are correct. So... William Henry Harrison got sick and he died 31 days into his term after being elected in 1841. All righty. Okay. This is a true or false question. <clears throat> so true or false, the CFL, so the Canadian Football League, their trophy is called the Grey Cup. True or false? Shit. Okay, so when you say football, do you mean soccer or actual football? Football, like actual football. Okay, I didn't even know Canadian had a football league. We Canada do. had a football league. That's awesome. Um. All right. Mm, I feel like it's gonna be named something better than that, so I'm gonna say false. You're wrong. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> the Grey Cup. Yes. Oh, man. (laughs) Which has been broken many times after uh, locker room celebrations. That sounds like hockey. Yeah. The Stanley Cup. Except this cup is even cheaper. Cheap. So we're we're on question four, right? Like, I'm on four. You've said four. It's two to one. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm going to stump you here. I have to stump you. All right. I'm going to give you a multiple choice question. Okay. When was the first United States dollar printed? Okay. Was it A, 
1847, B, 1862, C, 1875, or D, 1888? I'm going to go, wait, what was B? 1862. What was C? 1875? Yeah, I just made these up. I, I'm i going to go with 1875. False. It was 1862. Oh, dude, I was going to go with that one. See, what I did here was I'm actually on a website and there are like a hundred questions. I've been doing true or false because I couldn't think of like multiple choice. Yeah. But what I did here was I just picked random years. So I did like 1840s, 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. And I just picked a number off the top of my head. Okay. I see what you're but, doing. Well, you but, should, you'll pro- oh, no. you should, what? This, this is a multiple choice between two answers. This next one. Ah, oh, shit. Should, All right. Should know it. Hit me what, with it. What measurement is used in Canada to measure temperature? Is it Celsius or Fahrenheit? Oh, um, okay. All right. Celsius or Fahrenheit. This should be like a monthly thing. I actually really enjoy this. Um, <laughs> Bob Staggett. All right. Um, Celsius, because it's cold up there. Yeah, it's Celsius. <laughs> Yes! I had to think about that for a sec. Okay, so now we're tied two yes. for two. Yeah. It all comes down to this. If you get this right, you win. But if you don't, then we have to do it again. <laughs> oh, I got you. All right. When did ja- Wow, okay, hold on. <laughs> when did Japan attack Pearl Harbor? Was it December 7th, 1941, or December 7th, 1937? 41. You are right. I knew it. Dude, I'm a history buff. You don't you know won. that. One. Woo! You won. Simba, you won. raise him in the air. Oh! oh. You dog. You ever uh, watch Friends? A little bit. You know, are you familiar with Chandler's dance? Chandler, which one is he? Is he he's the, Monica's he's, brother? No, no, no. He's the guy that Monica ends up marrying. The guy that he's wears the, like, the sweater vests and stuff. He's a, not the actor, right? Not no, the actor. The guy. other guy. Other guy. Okay. I relate to Chandler more than he, anybody. He always does a dance. He's like, that's my victory dance now. All right. The Chandler all right. dance. Look, oh, I'm going to be honest with you. I am 0-2, but you know what? We're going to do this again next month. All right? <laughs> all right. Next month. Or, yeah, we're going to do this once per month, and we're going to see. Oh, I got hair like, in my nose. You got hair in your nose? From this cat. Are you going to be okay? <laughs> I'm going to be okay. <laughs> Is it going to get you? It already has, sadly. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) We also have Bean Boozled coming up in this month. so. Oh, yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah, we do. And an interview with Andy Beersack's father, Chris Beersack. Woo! Woo! Legendary Chris Beersack himself. We have a lot coming up. We have Chris Beersack. We have... Lonnie agreed to be on the show, yeah? Yes, Lonnie will be on the show sometime in December, so. Lilith Czar's drummer. Yep, Lindsay Martin. The Curse Within. Yep. And finally, we have Danger Danger Party, Party. a local St. Louis band. Yeah, we got got a lot going on. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. All right, well. Your cat just looks so angry. Yeah. Looks so mad. No. I can see like his eyes. That's all I can see. Bring it up a little bit. That's my cat. Meow. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that is our episode today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Ruth and Nicole, 
from Blackville Brides Army Hearts to Hearts. Let's make it happen. Hell yes. We'll see you guys in a week or two. Bye.